Hi, you guys. Ginger Cook here. I hope my sound is on. Is it, John? Um, We're going to be doing acrylic painting here. So, yeah. Oh, good. So, <laughs> we're, we're back from a week week vacation. A week of R&R. &R. Week of R&R &R where I painted every day. It was sort of different. I was painting and not explaining how I did it. It was what a revelation. <laughs> but anyway, kind of I'm going to be explaining how I do it today. We're going to be doing, we're going to add to our Christmas Kitty series that we have been doing for a couple of years now on YouTube. And we're going to add to that. It's really a simple painting. I think any of you can do it, whether you're a beginner. We'll have a traceable on our website, easily available in two sizes so that you can do this. And I think you're going to find this is going to be a super duper fun. And like I say, very, very easy to do. So uh, without further ado, without further ado, let's <laughs> let's go on down and I'll show you what we're going to paint. When oh, I was, that's so cute. When I was on our trip, these are little magnetic canvases. I found these at Hobby Lobby. And well, the first ones that came from a um, friend Lisa sent us to us. And then uh, then we, we liked them so much we bought more. So here's the here's this little round one. It actually would sit sit on the fridge. It'll just magnetic itself right to the fridge or something. That's sort of cute. But I'm gonna do a larger one. Here's our eight by ten, and I've already transferred him onto the canvas. For those of you who don't know how to do that. You get Sorel transfer paper, or you can just chalk the back of a piece of paper a couple of times and smudge the chalk around, say white, yellow chalk. And then you put down your drawing, and then you very carefully um, outline around it, and this is what you get, all right? So that's pretty self-explanatory. This is sort of a kind of a yellow-orange canvas. Yellow would be fine. Uh, something kind of light, I think. Uh, because of the blue background, you might have thought, well, maybe we should do blue. But I wanted to concentrate on the colors of the fur. And this is why we're doing that. So um, anyway, Sorel transfer paper, the thing about it is when we were using a piece on the front, on the ship, I wish I could show it to you. It's so funny. It it didn't, it had so many marks on it. I didn't think there'd be anything left. It could, it could uh, trans, transfer anything. And yet it did. You could use these over and over and over again. Until they no longer and work. then some of us will already buy them if you go to our just Amazon storage, you know. Uh, John will put the link up for you. The I don't think for the Amazon store, you you could uh, we put everything that if we if Amazon sells it and we use it, we try to put it up there so that you can find it easily, okay? And we're uh, woefully uh, behind, and we're woefully behind on that, but nonetheless, that's kind of where <laughs> that's it is. That's our intent, that's our intent. So, this is what we've got. We've got the sleeping kitty, and I think he's so cute. And what, if you're not aware of the other stuff that we have done with the sleeping kitty, um, I think we have the you have the yeah. This is a this is one of um our uh, Christmas kitties that we did, and that's that's on YouTube. And don't you think they'll look really cute together? And then we have um there's one more kitty in the light bulb. I don't know if you. Put that out there for us or not, John? You should have it in that group, ma'am. Well, John says we should have it in the group, but I believe him. You too, right? There I it believe is. Yeah. Me. So here's the other one. Um, I like that one. So this is really fun. Again, these are both YouTube uh, tutorials, um, and and I think that I thought it was kind of fun to just get this cat tradition. Christmas with cats. I don't know why. Um, if you're wondering about the prints, I'll show you these a little more later. It's a new thing John and I are doing. We've got a few available, these uh, uh, original prints for sale. And um, I'll just show you kind of like, like that. Yeah, the um, other upside down, my queen is. I do? Yeah. Isn't the other side beveled? Yes, yes it, it is. is. There you go. Sorry, <laughs> I had it wrong. So this is how you would, uh, this was how, how you would mount and frame these, okay? And, and that's 11 by 14. That's 11 by 14. Yeah. All right. And uh, these are just, I will show you more about the prints later, but that's what they look like. So, but you know, this is all fun to do. And uh, the prints are available uh, uh, for the on, holidays. They're on the auction site, Ginger Cook Auction, but they are being moved over, even as we speak, to the new site. Now, even though we were gone for a week, we, this Stay Wet palette is still wet. All the stuff's still good, you guys. Yep, so, just close it up and left it, kind of a little experiment. Yeah, so this is a burnt sienna, a cad yellow, medium yellow, uh, ochre, uh, some sort of light orange. Um, that's one of the um, Salvador colors. Um, burnt <laughs> umber, a couple of different oh, reds. That's their orange one, right? Yeah, and yeah. then this is a cad orange light. Um, 
got uh, ultramarine blue, phthalo green. It came up the other day that maybe I thought, uh, I don't use phthalo green. I do. I use phthalo green all the time in seascapes, and I'm just saying this. That's not the go-to color. We well, always mix it with something else because it's so bright and vibrant, okay? We often but, refer to it as a golf course green color. I often call it golf course green color because a lot of new students will just use it straight on, but it really depends on what you're painting, and maybe you want that color. So, you know, no judgment here, though it sounds... It sounds pretty judgy, doesn't it? But, but you got to trust me. <laughs> no judgment here. No judgment. Yes? So. No judgment. And then we got a little purple, a little paint's gray. I don't know if we'll use that or not. And um, a little bit of, of magenta because I want a pink. And it's a titanium white, which looks like it's seen better days. But nonetheless, we'll and a we'll little zinc white. We'll, we'll see what we can do with all this. And then I can always put out more paint. But I think that, you know, some of you find that, you know, I'll sit there and say, well, acrylic painting is very expensive because you end up throwing a lot of paint away. But I have to say these Stay Wet palettes a um, week later, are, we're still using are, are it. still using it. And we used a little one. We were on our vacation last, last week. We used a little one the whole time. Uh, Michelle has a question. Could you use gold gesso for the background of this particular painting? Yeah, Michelle, Isn't that's that an excellent because we almost <laughs> did. We had one, and I didn't because a lot of people don't have it. Gold gesso would be very pretty, and I'm going to show you a little experiment. I put some gold paint. This is um, um, uh, pearl gold from uh, Holbein, right? And I wanted to show you. Uh, I was going to show you a little experiment with that, so you could see how that would be. But yes, that would be very pretty. Okay, absolutely. So. If you look at what we're going to just get out a small brush, and um, I think we'll just start by getting giving a coat of red to the um, let's just do a coat of red on this uh, hat here because we know that's going to be we know what color that's going to be. Gonna and be there's red. my uh, my brush is, is is not damp because the paint's been sitting on this stay wet palette and the paint is very damp. And so I don't need any water on the brush. But if I were taking it off, say, a regular palette or paper plate, then I would use a damp brush and then wring it out so it was just slightly damp, not wet. Okay? So we would do that. I think you're going to be surprised. This is a little 8 by 10 I think you're going to be surprised how easy this is, is to paint. Now, we also have some... We have to do the drawing, John, from last uh, Wednesday. Uh, last week, we did uh, we did a premiere on YouTube. And we have, uh, let's see, what did I do with that um, picture? Here it is. This was last week's picture. Ooh. You're saying things from crashing a floor. Let me just move this out of the way. So real important. This was what we did last last uh, Monday uh, was our Santa. And you see I have, he's square and he's in a square frame from Jerry. Well, now that I can tell, nobody told me it was going big. Okay, now you can show it. Yeah, see, there it is. This big, big one. Now, and if you'll notice, if you if you happen to jump over to our Facebook club, I later did another one. Maybe John can show it to you. And I added a pack of cigarettes, some smoke coming out of here, and a whiskey bottle. But, you know, everybody's we, – we've had – you guys have had some huge fun with this. And a couple people have even sold the ones they've done. I think that's really great. And um, so this was uh, last week's tutorial on YouTube, okay? Uh Nonetheless, I wanted to make sure that you saw that. Let me just put this out of the way Nonetheless. now. Nonetheless. Nonetheless. Okay. So you're you're okay. You're going over here. All right. So just want to remind everybody of that. I want to thank our moderators who were there last week too in person for the um for moderating. And and who's here tonight, John, as I paint the as I paint this red. Well, I see moderator Steffi and um, Lou Ann and Liz C2 and 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 well, that's all that's all I'm seeing right now. Yeah. And of course the whole week John never quit working. I we do we, we never go anywhere where we don't do personal art coaching every day. We even when we're on what most people would think of as vacation, we're usually We don't um, take no stinking vacation. We we really just um maybe we we're somewhere else, but we're we're still always <laughs> we're just in working one of our on other either offices. designing artwork or I'm doing personal art coaching and yeah we got a couple uh, well we got about three or four things done yeah I got a bunch of stuff uh, really some neat stuff designed and in fact um, yeah so that's kind of neat kind of designed this on there too uh, Michelle no, whoa, 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 whoa. we have somebody Martine have you ever painted with gold leaf 
Um, no, uh, Martine, yeah, the thing about gold leaf, right, um, is I don't, you don't really paint with it, though, you can paint over it, boy, if you make a mistake, though, you're kind of stuck with whatever it is, I mean, it's, because you want the gold leaf to kind of stay by itself, so gold leaf, you can buy this, um, uh, well, it, it, well, the real gold leaf is just priced out of Twilight's gold, but they make a, 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 a fake one, or synthetic gold leaf, you know, that you could buy it. It's very thin. It comes in a little package like uh, square pieces of cheese with little self <laughs> pa paper pieces of paper. But a lot so thinner than cheese. Yeah, and um, there's, that's a whole other story about how you work with that and and can do that. And um, that's uh, something we don't that's, play with. Though. That's not something that's um, that we're doing. No. Okay. So um, now I could paint this heart red. Let me just show you because the gold came out. Here's some of this red paint, right? Now let me show you what the red looks like over gold. Looks pretty bright. And then and look what it looked like like for instance over this color. Do you see the? Can you see the difference? How much brighter the red looks like over gold paint? Can you see that? I can see that. You guys can kind of see it, right? There's a real reflective quality to it. So if I wanted, um, a very effective thing to do would be to take some. As long as we're, this is such a simple painting, I think I'll take the time to do it. Um, let's just put a little bit of, let's let's paint this um, this heart gold. I wouldn't paint the cat gold, but I might paint the heart gold because I want that a little brighter than his hat. So I'm going to go ahead and paint that, uh, just a layer of gold, and by the time we get back to it. So when I paint the red on top, it could... Um, It'll be a little bit brighter because that there is a huge difference. Of course, of course, if you paint red over white too. Now, if you did not have uh, gold and you wanted the red brighter, for sure, paint it over white. All right, and but just you know, someone says, what, well, what, when do you what, use what all that? Using there? This is that? the Holbein uh, pearl uh, gold. That was really nice of me to get that for you. Yeah, it's pretty, isn't it? It's it's a, it's a it's nice right. one. You know what you think? Andrew has a question. Yeah. We'll say hello to Andrew. Hello, Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Uh, first try in replying to a ticket in the new system, but it says closed, but a note was added. Now, is there a note field that they can put, get to and not really use the reply? I like, don't know. Do you have is a there? note field? We'll have to look. I don't I think I added a note. I think I just, I, 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 what I, I replied to the ticket and sent a, and sent a video pack. And and said and, and said something. So I close it, and then you go back and open it. I think is how that works. Yeah, Andrew. but I'm not sure, Andrew. If you press the reply, you need to press the reply that's at the bottom. But there is a place to put a note in there that would be a note internally just to you. I believe. I believe. I don't believe I did that. No, you would not do that. I'm talking to Andrew now. Oh, pay attention. To what's going on here? I'm sorry, Andrew. I'm just lost here. <laughs> I'm one of these people that we will look visual aids. I have no clue what anybody's talking about. Right. <laughs> All right, I, I so you can see why this that. is why I'm doing that because you see how you here. Let brighter. me just show you this red next to the red here. Do you see how much brighter this red here is than what I put on the hat? Can yeah. you see that? Yeah. So I, I mean, that's just to me very interesting, isn't it? So mm -hmm. people always say, "Well, how do you know when to paint what?" And sometimes you just have to do little experiments, and maybe you'll come up with something really cool and share it with us because we certainly well, are yeah, not the end it's... all of know all. We just know some stuff and we share it. Yes. And the thing to keep in mind is the paint, even though it says it's opaque, is really not opaque. Yeah. The paint is still see throughable. All right. So I have that and I'm gonna I'm gonna i I'm not gonna get white next to wet red. That would be terrible, but I think I can um I think I could work a little bit on the cat's body. So I'm gonna take a little bit of burnt sienna and come on up here and a little bit of um yellow. Okay, maybe a little bit of yellow here. Yeah, that's kind of a nice cat color. I think I like a little bit of that orange color. Let's add a little bit of orange color with it. There we go. And I'm just going to give another coat of paint to this cat. Come around here like that. And uh, if I like that color or not. It's not ter okay, so then if I take a little bit of this kind of lighter orange, Let's just add a little bit of that to that because that's just a bit ho-hum. 
ho-hum. That's a ho-hum color. I'm not really not wanting to hum, and it really doesn't feel like ho-ho-ho, so it's ho-hum, right? <laughs> it's a ho-hum cat. Ho-hum cat. So, um, and it's very close to my background color, yes? It is currently. Are you keeping the background d color that color? No, the background color is going to change. Perhaps we'll do the background color next. Then we will not be confused. I'm a little confused. Look, hey, I, I Eric, think, huh? Eric gave us a little donation here. Happy <gasps> Thanksgiving, Ginger and John, and the mods, too. Thank you. Oh, thank Mr. you very Eric. much, Eric. That is awesome. Oh, speaking of donations, this is our basically coming to the end of our um, quarterly painting giveaway that we have for our people that have donated a hundred dollars or more for each hundred dollars donated they have an entry in our drawing for one of three original paintings of ginger cook yeah and that will be done on the first show in december which i believe is sometime soon now i'm using thalo green ultramarine blue and white this is the color i'm using mostly thalo green and white with a tiny bit of ultramarine blue oh we got one more show we have the 29th okay that's good to know that's too dark put some more white with that there we go see it just needs a little bit of white and now you're going to see the cat color show up a little bit and again i'm using just one of these these holbein brushes are angle brushes uh, not Holbein, they're uh, Bristol on brushes, one half inch, um, one half inch uh, angle. And, uh, people, you know, a lot of different companies, these are fairly new for 2021. They were a fairly new brush. And I, you guys will know, if you know me, I latched onto these because I quite like them. And because they really hold an edge, and yet you can do a lot with them. Now, please notice that the brush strokes are kind of just kind of almost like quotation marks, kind of swirling around. I'm not, um, um, it's just not straight across, okay? Kind of little X's or whatever you want to do. And we'll just keep going. And um, I'll just keep making a little more of this color, a little bit at a time, okay? And I, this has this is really a turquoise blue color, but there's enough green in it where there's a, um, uh, it's a little bit like, um, you know, green and red are compliments, and so it's a nice color. That's why I picked this color to put with that, all right? Because green and red are compliments. And, you know, you're going, well, what do you mean by that? You know, green or red are compliments. And I, so you guys that know this, just bear, I'm going to explain it because there's a lot of people who even renewed the channel, have no idea what I'm talking about. You say words like that, and they go screaming out of the room going, no, no, no more information. It's too much. I can't stand it. <laughs> you know, uh, please, no, no, no information. I guess if you give me any more information, I'll go crazy. So let me just, here's a, here's Ooh, happy a color. Happy Thanksgiving here's to a, Linda Sue. Linda oh. Sue popped in to say, hey. Hey, Linda Sue. I'm glad you popped in to say, hey. And um, we're going to make an announcement about um, our uh, upcoming joint workshop with Cinnamon in May, May 2nd through the 6th. That's the first time we're really talking about that that much. There's limited space, and um, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be a fabulous fun. We'll talk more as the days goes on about it. But there's a limited number of people that uh, that, that we can kind of, accept. They can accept it. It's on a first come first day. Uh, so first if you're come interested, basis. what is it? Support at theartsherpa.com. Support at theartsherpa.com. If you would like to paint be in person with myself and my daughter Cinnamon. And get step-by-step uh, -step instruction and great fun. And, oh, my gosh, you won't believe what it's going to be. She's done a couple of these. They're fabulous. This is the first time I will be joining her. And kind that's of, May 7th? Yeah, all the paints. You don't have to bring your paints or nothing. It's all inclusive with the food. But more details. But Linda's the one that's keeping track of the list. So be sure. But the date has been set, May 2nd, right? Yeah, so if you want dibs on the first, first come, first serve, uh, you've got to... Um, contact them you know them right away and say you're interested and so it's support you're going to email them at support at the art sherpa.com and just say add me to the spring fling does they have an official name yet probably not an official name yet i don't know if they have a spring you know, linda do they or have to, official, the, to the may this to the may, may 2nd through the 6th that we have official dates and the hotel's all been reserved all that stuff yeah and uh but more details to come 
But uh, that's, and I think in the five years that uh, you know John and I have been together, uh, we have not ever done a workshop like that. We had a few people come to our birthday cruise and they just painted, and I might have come around and said something, but it wasn't any of that. This is a, kind of the first time that uh, though I used to have you know for years I did workshops all the time, but you know anyway this is the first time in a few years, so it's kind of neat. All right, so here's a color wheel, and you'll notice that the color red is opposite the color green. Yellow is opposite purple. Can you see that? I see that. So when we say that, and when there a color is opposite, opposite its um, uh, opposite from its uh, its companion over there, the purple is yellow, opposite yellow, so forth, green, red, uh, orange, turquoise, and so forth. What you've got is um, what they call complementary colors, and a lot of times you'll see that in design, people will, you usually don't do 50 50. Okay. Want well, to be careful not to do that, but usually one complementary color would dominate. But it's nice to have those together when you're painting. You know, so, you know, someone says, How do you pick the colors? That's one way. There's other ways to pick colors, but that certainly the, is one way. The eyeball likes complementary colors. Yeah. It's kind of like putting salt on, uh, on eggs, it just tastes better. Well, I like my Chicago steak season. Now, as so. I come down here, I'm going into light blue. And so uh, that means I'm adding uh, the same color, but I'm adding a lot more white to it as I come down here around this cat. Hey, we'd like to thank Andrew for the donation that came in through PayPal. Happy Thanksgiving and the best to both of you. Oh, thank you very much, Andrew. It was very kind of you. You know, with cinnamon up in... Um, up the, in, the workshop will be held in Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania, yes. In the Poconos. In the Poconos, at this really cool resort, which has got, it's, there's a golf course there. If somebody wants to bring a husband or friend, or you know, and a lake and canoeing, all kinds of great stuff to do. Uh, you, we'll keep you busy, but um, if you got someone with you that thinks they might like want to go, go along for the ride, um, I think that you might, they might, you might be surprised. Might be this is really. Um, a, a good time place. must be had by all. Yeah, and, and the thing of it is is that they, they got their reservations. This place fills up quickly. They got their reservations in early to, to block this in. And uh, she's got a special place to hold the the uh, the paint lessons, you know, the lessons. And um, uh, that had to be reserved ahead of time. It's a big deal putting one of these, a, a lot of work. I'm glad Cinnamon's doing it. He's putting it. <laughs> I'm just glad Cinnamon's doing it. Absolutely. I'm so glad. And, I, and I'm glad that she invited us to come. And John, will, I'll, go, I'll go up there a few, few days early and um, visit, with the kiddies. visit with the grandkids. But uh, for Thanksgiving this year, and th thank you very much, Andrew, for that. We, we really were just kind of on our own. And um, one of my cousins, who um, is a, actually a, an airline uh, attendant, she retired. She now. retired and bought a house in about an hour and a half from us. And she called me up the other day, and so cute. She always calls me, "Cuz, how you doing, Cuz? Fine. What you doing for Thanksgiving? <laughs> nothing. We got nothing. We got nowhere to go. Probably won't even do a turkey. Probably just, you know, probably Sitting won't do anything. Just, each other. just probably won't do anything. We just nothing. Don't be invite this anywhere. We got nowhere to go. She said, "Come to my house for Thanksgiving, Cuz. Okay, really." Sure, we'll come. So uh, anyway, um, uh, that's what we're doing. And uh, that'll be fun for Thanksgiving, I think. Uh, I'll always enjoy her company. All right, so you see how I've got kind of a layer of color on here. Now you can kind of see where the cat's going, yeah? Yeah, I can see the cat now. I, can see him I now. couldn't see him before. Well, he was a little hard to see before, yeah. but now you got you guys for sure kind he of see him, right? Washed. Yeah, and so this red's kind of dry. Now, now what I want to do here is while I'm in the white paint, I want to take white and a little tiny bit of this blue color, ultramarine blue, and I want mostly white, and I'm going to paint this first round of white on this um, on his little ball right here. And I'm not going to put all the fuzzy stuff on yet where it goes all fuzzy, but this is the kind of the darkest color of the white ball, and the same thing up here. We might as well... I've got the brush dirty anyway, so I might as well do that, yeah? Might as well. And that's that's what we're all thinking here, might as well. Might as well. Might as well, yeah? So while we were gone this last week, um, like, like I say, we got to paint, and uh, that was really fun. 
And we were visited with uh, Rebecca. And, and Becky. Becky got a visit with us. She had a little one-on-one. -on -one. So that was fun. She was painting along, too, and she painted some, She put some of her stuff in the club. Maybe. Becky's one of our moderators in Facebook, um, uh, which is kind of neat. And let's see, I need to bring the this a little closer here, that green color. See, you're already close to all these colors here, so you can just kind of bring them all in here like that. Um, during the every, – every day I do personal art coaching, and there's something I've noticed that some of you are doing that – <laughs> Not a criticism, <laughs> just an idea. It must be tactful. Yeah. Okay. So you don't want to use so much water that you can see the canvas through it. You know, you might want to put a little more paint on it than that. And then you dry brush on top of that, but you do need a good layer of paint on your canvas. I'm just saying, under an underpainting or whatever, you need a good layer of paint and then it can dry or whatever. But, um, I'm going to make these a little bit darker. The corners a little bit darker. That's another little trick we're going to do, too. You didn't see it in the round one so much, but that forces the eye down toward the middle. You do something like this, and it's all still a damp enough. Vignetting. Yeah, you just kind of, like a little vignette, just kind of bring your eye down there. And I uh, uh, want to do that. And, um, oh, yeah, here we go. See if you got a little blue. And, there you go. There, something pretty easy. Now, here's the thing. Because I've had blue on this, and now I'm going to go into the golds for the cats, blue and yellow are green. So if you've you got any blue cat. on the brush at all, <laughs> you're going to have a green cat. We don't want a green cat. So one of the things you could do is you just kind of rub it. On, you know, This is why I love these white towels, because you kind of squeeze it out on there. If you see any green, keep rinsing. Yes? No, no ghost color. Second choice would be grab a second brush. Well, you grab a new brush, too. All right, so this is this is drawing here. We need another layer on that. But let's just um, let's work on the cat. Nicely. Yes, this is kind of nicely. So this is what I love about this. I'm going to take a little bit of um, burnt umber. And, and notice how flat the brush is. Now, look, see? See how flat this brush is? I don't want to just come right over here like that. And just put the eyes in, okay, like so, just because I don't want to lose them. Well, you wouldn't want to lose them. Let's put a little dark brown right there. Let's do a little dark brown up here and then take a little bit of yellow. A lot of yellow oxide in this cat, so take a little bit of dark brown, yellow oxide, make something a little bit uh, darker here. And let's put a little bit of red with that. There we Here's go. a comment from Miss Bic Miss Becky. Yeah. I truly enjoyed the week. I already missed someone cleaning my house, cleaning my room, cooking, entertaining me, and painting every day with you. Oh yeah, Becky, that was you, fun. Yeah, and uh, and John introduced uh, Becky to the and her husband and and cousin to um the finer cuisine of Indian food. Yeah, Indian food, right? Which um because they'll make you know so he. <laughs> They had not had the opportunity to try that. I have tried and have found that that's probably <laughs> not for me, but John could just move over there and just just loves it. So anyway, they got and they liked it too. So it was sort of interesting. So we got this little darker. There's some people can appreciate finer foods in life. I'm going to take a little bit of this orange, light orange and yellow oxide now and kind of combine those two. I want to come on up here like this and, Give another little coat of uh, kind of this darker color. It's not quite as dark as what I just did, but please notice that um, uh, the brush strokes are all going up. They're kind of going up like this, right? Uh, don't go straight across, right? So brush strokes make a difference. And we know we've got something a little dark right here on the nose. And then as we go down toward the cheeks, we want to come down this way. And this is just that light orange color. And um, uh, a little bit of uh, yellow uh, ox oxide or ochre, okay? Yeah, so see, that's the, what's... the majority of the fans are um, casting a vote on this Indian food. Yeah. I love Indian food. Love Indian food, too. Mm, I love Indian food. Indian food is my favorite. Hmm. Huh. So it might be a minority just... in this room. 
Uh, well, I don't <laughs> counting for taste. I mean, I don't know what to say, but you know, it, a lot of it's what you grew up with, right? Yeah, I did not grow up with Indian food. Well, I am from Ohio. Listen, we didn't have so much as a taco in our. No, we didn't eat it. We had no Chinese food, all the way no to taco, the turkey or India, no. you know, for stuff. I mean, um, I didn't get that stuff until I got married to Karen. She she brought she introduced me to the finer cuisines. Well, then, um, and then when I was a kid, my the, there was a big Chinatown in 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 Seattle, and uh, you could go down there and like for three bucks, you know, feed ten people kind of thing, right? It was one of those things. It was just great, and you know, we did that. I mean, for sure, we we had a really good time. I loved it, but. Um, so you want to bring up a little bit of this, a little bit darker here, a little bit of there. Just kind of come, kind of tuck this under here like that, make that a little darker. Okay. All right. So you can see where we're kind of. Oh, George is with you. Who? George, because I'm with Ginger. You don't like Indian food. Yeah. See, see, George. Oh yeah. Okay. That's, so that's one to one to a hundred. Sorry. Well, I don't know. Well, it's all right. Well, you know what? Different it's shows, all right. Different, the different stuff, right? And okay, so now we're going to get into a little bit of white paint in this lighter color, and I want to I want to start doing something a little bit lighter here, like this. Just barely touch this. Just so here's an observation, white. and probably wants looking for a confirmation. So basically, brush strokes follow direction of fur. Yes. By the way, I love Indian food. Southern Indian is mild, milder. Just so you know. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I don't think it'll matter to her. Well, the, um, yeah. The, um, <laughs> and I see I'm going this way on the, on the, on the, on the pause. You're going around this way, kind of following the brush strokes. Um, you know, kind of follow the, follow it the way you'd brush them. How's that? That's a good way to put it. You know, if you had to brush them, you know how you're supposed to. There oh, you go. That's just, a, just a little bit lighter here. You see how we're starting to. Um, this, this is going this way over the toes, that way, okay. And now this gold is dry. Now I'm gonna. I need a littler brush here, so let's just take something smaller. I need a pink for the nose, so we're just gonna do white and a little bit of magenta, like ninety-eight percent white, okay. And I'm gonna come down here. I'm just gonna say here's my nose right here. That looks blue to me. Yeah, it says a blue nose. Well, you know what? Is the, it cold? The, you know, no, it's not that. It's just that the white was dirty. What color are you going for? Well, I'm going for pink here, but I'm not getting anywhere because <laughs> now I've got a purple nose. <laughs> so that's okay. It's not a problem. It's not a problem. We can we can handle it. You we know? can fix just, that. You know, we can handle it. If we had white paint, we'd do something about it. So you can see where. I, I've got some a problem with this white paint, so let's just scrape all this all out of here like that. Give myself a new place to play. I'll just put all that. I'll just throw that away later. But I'm gonna just scrape this off. Now I'll put some white paint out, and it will be clean, supposedly. Okay, so there's some white paint now. Um, now can you do anything with that if it's wet? No, you can do nothing with that. So you either have to dry it or what you know or take it off. Now that the good side the good thing is it'll come right off. The downside is that your little chalk marks just came off too. So I'd probably if I were you and you made a mistake like that or a miscalculation, I don't like to think we ever make mistakes, but miscalculation in color, you might want to consider doing that. So here's some let's just do red and white to go go for pink here. I think we could do that, right? <laughs> Get red and white, maybe a little orange in it too. There you go, sort of a red, white, pink nose. That's a red, a white, pink nose. Hmm. There you go. Hmm. No, okay, so I'm going to come in here like that. Could be a little bit stronger here where the nose is coming down. This is a zero brush. And boy, I'm just Becky and I were talking about how nice it is to paint with these because you can get such detail on the... On the brushes, let's take a little bit of darker red here where the little nostril is. So that's where we want that magenta color. Light like that where the little nostril is. 
and um, we got nowhere. I see nothing happening. All right, there we go. Yes, yes, and yes. And um, it could be a little darker right where his mouth is, just where this little this little uh, little arrow shape comes up, made just a little bit darker. Okay, so far so good. And then the top, this nose coming around like this. Here's the top. Kind of rounded it off on top. There you go. So you can see that you can see the little pink nose now. Now you're not going to see that much of it until we um, add a little bit of light yellow up here on the top like this. This is sort of it's going to come up this way. And then we want to come above here like that and start adding some of this lighter color right underneath the eyes. There like that. And I, I love that it kind of fans out. You see that? The, this color sort of fans out. You'd think it would be just pure white, but it just got a little bit of little bit of color in it. And uh, then he's got a little bit coming up this way on his face. And then he's got some something lighter going this way. Little cheeks in this way. Two yellow, a little more white, right next to the nose there. And a little bit on the chin. Now this is where another brush is handy because when you're using a pointed brush, it's a little bit harder to, um, uh, to kind of fan out stuff. And I want this lighter color here, this white color to fan out. So. I want a brush like this to sort of fan it out. Does that make sense? I don't want little blobs of paint like this. I want to sort of fuzz out the edges here. So you don't need a lot of paint. That's the trick here. Just really just don't need that much paint. We know we want a little bit more here. Something here like that. And this is where you can kind of narrow the eyes if you needed to. We've got this coming up here like that. A little bit of white. And get in the habit of just not having that much paint on your brush and allowing it to sort of just ghost image it on there like that. So a little bit of fur that's happening. I know that this is going to be a little lighter right here. Come down. And if I have any little extra paint, I might just come up here and add some of this little fur stuff. I think that's good for that first off. Any qu questions, John? I uh, don't think so, my queenness. Okay, so remember, they want this to be. They actually make brushes that um, fur are brushes. the fur brushes, but on something like this, I really, I really don't think you need it. It's got these sort of tiger paws They're going this way with the stripes. I think a little bit of white in the burnt sienna, just a tiny bit of that. There you go. It's a white on the white on the top of the paws. Now, that's a little bit more paint than I want. If you get too much paint, what happens is, is then you get a little blob, and then that's you're not going to have an effective furry kitty. So, uh, that's probably where. Um, there we go. Now we'll just put a little of this color over the top of that. Okay. So it's all about layering, you know. This is how I do stuff like this. I would I would layer it and just keep everything kind of coming this way. Just build it up. And uh, kind of just kind of, kind of a darker orange red here on here like that. Put this. You can put the stripes back. If you lose the stripes, put a few back. It's okay. You can, there you go, kind of get his little paw down like that. But what happens is you build it up. Does that make sense? You don't just start with a color. You just kind of start with something, and then and you build up the, the paint. So, like, for instance, we know that there's a little bit of a stripe there, too. And uh, I know that the top of this little ear is coming down here. And, again, I don't have any water on this paint. 
and that's because I want it to um, top of his ear like that top of his head there you go there we go that's it and just kind of build up but she can keep kind of building up the face and I know one of you is probably gonna say well I want to open the cat's eyes um, if you open the eyes the facial expressions will look different it will look odd um, if you open the cat's eyes, oh, I think I, just because his face is scrunched up a certain way because his I'm eyes sleeping. are not open. Yes and yes. So he looks like he has a beard right now. Huh? He looks like he has a beard. Oh, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> like a little beard, right? So that's that's what you want to you want to avoid, and you can always keep adding lighter colors. You see, acrylics dry darker, so you can see where I'm just coming above this eye here and adding some lighter stuff and uh, it's just something something this way on his cheeks like coming that way and that way and again if you get too much put a little put a little uh, put a little gold back see put a little gold or a little bit of this sort of rust rust color a little bit of orange like right from his eyes there's almost a like there's a little rust color right there and then Another little one right there. And same thing here. So kind of look for the patterns. I guess that's what the, the the word is here. Look for the patterns as you're painting them in. And uh, look for the yeah, look for the patterns for sure. That's what you want to do. But I want something a little lighter here. So on his little paws. I think his little paws are really cute. Now this is where zinc white can be candy because you can lighten something without really changing it too much. Notice that it's almost like the see how it's curving around. It's not straight down. And if you make two or three marks with your brush and nothing happens, go get more paint. Don't um don't sweat it, just get more paint. There we go. See how we're kind of building him up a little bit. And again, it's all about layers. And so if you're doing this, you know, just think well, one color overlaps another color. That's something to ask yourself too. What What's overlapping here? Especially when it comes to fur. Yeah, because it's almost like doing shingles on a roof. Something's overlapping something else, right? So like this fur here is kind of overlapping the dark brown on the inside of his um, fur right here, okay? Karen makes a remark. I love that it's all about layering. I am learning that. It's one of the main reasons the tutorials are so helpful. Left to my own and amateur devices, I falter. I need all the great layering instructions. Well, good advice. yeah, it, 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 it was about layering. Yeah, because yeah, it absolutely is. Let's take a little white now here. You know, if you've ever seen a ginger paintings up close and personal, there's more than one color in each brush stroke, and it's a little because of layering and not cleaning the brush. This is a little fat paws. That's so cute. Uh, who doesn't like kittens? <laughs> They're fun, aren't they? I was just thinking how fun baby animals are. All all baby animals are quite fun, actually. Yeah, I want to lighten this, lighten this up a little bit under the eyes here. Make it a little bit wider. Okay. It's almost He looks almost like he's squinting. Uh, let's bring the white down here like that in front of this one. There we go. That's a little better. Now... This is all dry, so while I'm letting that dry, what I'm going to do is to show you. I'm going to take some uh, some red paint, and I'm going to go ahead and paint this heart, and it will be brighter than his hat. Than his hat because of painting it over gold. This cad red medium.
And again, if you didn't happen to have the gold paint, you certainly could use um, white paint that would make it brighter. Let's see. Now, because the kitty's chin is over this, I'm going to have to put some fur over oh, the yeah. um, yeah over this, and so the red's going to have to dry, which is why we needed we needed this like that. But uh, there we go. So just got a nice layer of uh, paint on there. Now here's something interesting. If you're going to paint um, gold. Like, for instance, if you have a gold frame and picture frame, paint it red first and then put the gold on top. It's almost the opposite of what we're doing. I should do that. And now it's a little darker on the bottom here because this is the shadow side. So if I want it a little darker here, I can add just like less than 1% ultramarine blue. And um, okay, that will darken this. It will make it almost like a burgundy color on the side, like that. Just make it a little bit darker right there, maybe. So, so if I do that, what happens is it just gives it a little bit. Uh, so it's lighter on top. Does that make sense? So well, it if gives I a dimension. gives it three dimensional look, if it's just just slightly, it doesn't have to be much, you guys. And let's do the same thing with them. Um, with our hat, our hat needs another color of a um, of red. And we know we've got some dark there. So we've got like some dark folds. And while it's still wet, you don't want to do too much, but you, you know when it's still wet, you've got some darker folds in here. And uh, that would be the time to put them in while it's, everything is still wet. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a second layer of color and put a little bit more of that darker. See, I want some some folds up in here. And it, you don't want hard lines. So what you can do with this is because it's all wet, you can kind of smudge it out. And even use a little purple would work too if you didn't have ultramarine blue. So here we go. Let's just make sure we're covering everything. Just kind of, now we're going to have to do some highlights on this too, but we've got um, a very okay. nice balance here of, of the red. Yes, yes and yes. you got a good looking kitten. So if I take a little bit of white here on the top, this is zinc white. If I did this, blend it in pretty much, we'll lighten this up. Titanium wouldn't wouldn't work as well because it it'll turn it pink but the zinc white would can lighten it sometimes and um can also add a little bit of orange and red together so some sort of a little bit lighter red here and just say i want this to be a little bit lighter right here and while it's still wet you can blend some of that in there we go See, just right up here on his hat there, top of his hat. We made that a little lighter. I mean, it's small stuff, right? And the same thing here. We can take a little bit of that light orange and red. And say, I want something a little bit lighter up here. This is his cat orange. And um, even lighten it up up here on the top even more. Because it's, because it's still wet, it's not going to look orange. It's going to blend in. You can use your finger to smudge the edges. But you see how much brighter that's going to look. And, it, and it's interesting because it's it's very subtle. You wouldn't necessarily think it would make that much difference, but it does. Even down here on his hat, see, I can add a little bit of that color. And, uh, and it just gives it a, just a little bit more of a highlight. This is real subtle stuff, you guys, but and people say, I don't understand how you got the colors. Because you do this is wet on wet blending kind of stuff, right? You've got it darker under here and lighter up there. So then I'll take a little bit of say purple and come under here like this because I want something pretty dark and there's a little space between the heart and his paw. 
that's dark. And even under here, there's a little bit, take a little bit of purple color because that white's going to go over it, but I want a little bit of this purple. And then right under his, there's a little shadow right here. Take all that green blue color. Say right here, there's a little shadow right there. Kind of indicate that he's on the ground and uh, not floating in space. If you don't put shadows in, then your artwork looks like it's floating. Let's make this a little blue or blue green here. That's, I'm using zinc white. So see how I'm blending it from dark blue into the lighter blue green. And then I'll just come up with a little white paint and lighten it all up again. Very gently now, hardly pushing it. You see how see how this is melting into this and melting into that? I'm not pushing it very much. You see how we're doing that? Let's just now getting into the bottom of my brush here. Here we go. A little bit of white, a little bit of this. Oh, the thalo blue would work too. If that's all you had. If you had thalo blue, it would work. Just gonna kind of wipe that off and come under here like this. Just blend that out. You barely touch it. Just barely touch it. Just smudge that out there. Okay, so there's our um, uh, furry stuff here. Now, I'm going to work a little more on the cat, but before I do, I want to dry everything. So, John, I'd like to show you have that. Um, do you have and, time to do the drawings from last week? Um, sure. I can do whatever I need to do. Well, do you want to show that? You want to show? Um, oh, we can show Tara. Tara we'll show. Well, one of our artists. We tried to do shout outs. We, so, what are we doing? Tara, Tara did the Santa. Okay. So, back out, and I'll show the big Santa, and then you can show Tara's. Okay. Yeah, All right. This week, every week in our academy, or every few days, every, you know, several times Whenever. a month. Whenever we get to it, but there's lots of tutorials that get released all the time just for Academy members. And there's some of them are a lot more challenging than what we put on YouTube. And they're rated from one to, we keep it one to two cookies on YouTube. Sometimes we go into three and four and pull box of cookies. But here's the, you may have seen this last week. If you're new to the channel, this is a, uh, what, 12 by 24 yeah. gallery wrap canvas. This is called Sparkle Santa. And, um, this was one of our step-by-step -step tutorials, and we've had one person do it so far. It's turned it in for a pack. And turned it in for personal art coaching that I got to see, and we're going to do a shout-out to her. I made the eyes where he's looking down and kind of closed, not that dissimilar to the cat, because I wanted to keep this pretty easy for people to do. So this would be real hard. You could, you know, do a transfer of the image on, okay? And Tara, when you look at hers, what she did was she opened the eyes, really cute, a little more advanced uh, painting there. And, uh, and John's going to show you that why I draw this, okay? All right. There you see Tara's fine artwork of Sparkle. Beautiful job. And I, like Ginger was saying, she opened the eyes, had him looking at the hand and all. Nice effect. Really a beautiful job on that. So congratulations on that, Tara. Uh, job well done. I saw you were asking questions about using house paint for big paintings. I personally would not do that because the polymers are going to be different than the house paint versus a Philip artist paint. But you can certainly experiment with it on a smaller canvas, but it could be one of those things that can be time sensitive and it may disappear with time. So Tara, nice job on Sparkle. We like it. I like the idea of the eyes opening. Yeah, me too. Me too. So I'm kind of come up under here now, and I'm looking at my painting, and I'm going to darken this right next to the this little area right here next to the the um the fur the fur ball right there, and I want to make sure I have it kind of dark under here like that on his chin here where he's coming like that, and a little bit darker right there. Okay. Now I'm kind of looking, I'm looking, if somebody wants to know where, where my reference photo is, I actually have it on an iPad, and it's looking, I'm looking right at it, and you can kind of see it, but that's where my reference photo is, okay? Just in case anybody wanted to know how that was working. And I want to do something right up in here like this, 
to show that this is a kind of furry right there. Right there, it's kind of separated this little paw there. And uh, just come that way a little bit with the little toes. Toes are so cute, yes. Who doesn't love little kitty toes, okay? Then I'm gonna take a little bit of the, something a little darker right here and just to re redo this, do this eye, right? Just this part of the eye. And a little bit more on his nose. And then I want a little bit more on his mouth. I want the mouth to come. Well, let's see. Let's get the nose right. Um, the nose comes down a little bit from that, right? Like that comes down. And then it goes. A little tiny, there's a thin line, and then it comes down this way. Now, if you get it too wide, what you can do is you can come back with um, another color. Let's see, I want to get the red off my brush. Okay, so I didn't want it that wide, so I can come in here with the with this brush here and thin out that little line right there see and the same thing here I can thin that out so if you're having trouble getting a small line don't don't sweat this you know don't 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 let that distress you because here let's put a little fur on his chin over this um uh heart here. Please don't let that distress you because it's certainly something that's quite fixable. Okay. And you can always go back and just do a little thing like that or a little thing like this. And, um, and just add, add some detail to this. And let's see, let's take a little bit more of the yellow oxide color and uh, come down over here like that. So it's not such a big jump here a little bit of shadow coming this way yeah. okay and i'm going to just again want something a little stronger right here Make that a little bit of a shadow here on the side of his face. There we go. Okay. So it's get, getting cuter, right? And then right in here, there's quite a space between here. We need some more light here. We need, if I if I look at this, let me just show you what I'm talking about. If I look at this right to here, do you see right there? And there's a line like that where it's dark. So this space in here needs to be the right right in here. It needs to be needs to come up here a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter maybe here like that pull it that way so kind of pay attention to the patterns a little bit if you can and um and remember they overlap so it just never is anything just kind of one thing but kind of coming up there like that so you'll get a little bit further with this if you do that okay there we go. Now we haven't done any fur. Now for those of you who have modeling paste, I really thought that you could that's where I would do it if I was going to put modeling paste. I'd do it on the fur, furry stuff. So I had some three-dimensional stuff on it. If you were going to do that, that's when I where I would do that for sure. But um let me just change brushes. And uh, come back up here like this. I want something lighter right here. A little bit of zinc white is another one that's a really good one to, because you just kind of dry brush it over, barely touch it. Just kind of what, put it on and then kind of wipe it off and then drag it. Okay. And the same thing up here like this. I'll put a put a that with a little bit of this light color, and it's there's 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 light and then there's this. Kind of his forehead has got all these nice sprays of something light. Okay.
There it looks looks like he's sleeping comfortably, doesn't it, John? It certainly does. This is this is a cat that that is snoozing for sure. We thought that the the the, the title was good. Didn't you think our title was good? It was a great title. A little separation between the uh, back of back of him. All right, so now time to do this. Now we're going to start using the edge of our brush and doing this as far as the uh, the fur. Now what you do? Here's the brush stroke. Okay, you put the put the paint flat on the brush like this. If you get a big blob, that's not as effective. So if you have it fairly flat and then put it on the tail and then lift up, push it on the edge and lift, edge and lift. Okay, it's a flick of the wrist. If you do this, you'll get that. So it's it's lift lifted. Okay. So right off will, the toe. Yeah, just the toe of the brush. This is one time you really need to have an angle brush to do this. Yeah, I mean you can do it with others, but but it's uh, most effective. Most effective, and you want some of this darker blue color to show underneath on on the painting. You know, on the painting because that's your shadow color on the um, on here. And then, like in the middle, I wouldn't have it. You know, I just might just sort of swirl some brush strokes around making it seem more fuzzy so where i want the where i want the this stuff now notice it's curving this way so kind of watch it don't make grass it's not a picket fence vary the height and what you're doing of you know there you go in the brush strokes you got something coming this way and then in between it's all just sort of very fuzzy so again, you just don't want to pick a fence, but look how furry. You really feel like you could kind of touch the fur, don't you hear like that? Amazing yeah. what a few brush strokes can do. Yeah, I mean, it is, isn't it? Isn't that just sort of fun? And that little bit of blue shows underneath, and that's all you had to do there. I tell you, you're going to be just shocked how easy this is. So it's the same thing here with this one, with the, with the little ball of fur. I'll tell you what, if I had a kitten that you'd had to put the the hat on it because if you'd seen that ball of fur, he'd be on his back and that little ball of fur would be on his tummy. And he'd be playing with it. And having fun with it. And just ju jumping and bracing around the house. I know exactly what this little cat would be doing, right? But he's exhausted. So that's how they got the cat, the, um, uh, the fur. See how I'm just like almost parentheses kind of swirling this around. Hey, we'd like to thank Catherine for the donation that came in through the PayPal system. Oh, Catherine, it's very kind of you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. And incidentally, um, again, I want to say that we've, you know, the two people that we scholarshiped last month, I'm still waiting for your personal art coaching. If you're having trouble, Figuring out how to load the ticket, please use the contact us. That's the rest of you too. If you're an Academy member, we're we're starting to do personal art coaching on the new ticket system. We've got a place where you can put your bio. Even if you gave me a bio four years ago, I want to see the new thing, your new goals, your new stuff, what you want to paint. It's too cool, right? So we absolutely want to see that. Now this is fun too, because this is the um this is a kind of a furry blanket he's on too. See that? Now, John, be getting ready because we we said last week that we would be doing a drawing. Yes, my queen is for the um, uh, the um, a downloadable lesson. Um, yeah, we had three things. We had the Salvador kit, the downloadable lesson, and a print. Yeah, so we're just saying that this is. So I'm just said, waiting for a pause in the action. All right. Well. Because I don't want anybody missing the brush no, you by don't brush miss, You don't action. miss this, right? This is great fun. Probably a little sink right here because I don't want to lose too much of this, but I'm going to just say that um, this is a... There it goes. It's kind of swirling this around here. That's the zinc white because you can get that really transparent. There he is with this. Oh, he looks so fuzzy. Doesn't he look cute? I feel like we're a little dark right there. So John's getting ready to do that. And I'm going to just... Lighten this up a little bit right there. Okay. And is there anywhere else I can lighten up, Kitty? I think so. 
I think it needs to be lit, lit up a little bit. That's too much. See, too much paint. See, I'm going to wipe all that off. Just use whatever there's. There, there you go. Smush it around. Smush it around. There, there's just a fuzz, fuzzy, fuzzy cat. And he was, uh, let's see, it's a little bit darker right here where its little back leg is sticking out here. Too much paint. Let's see, wipe all that off. Just use what you got. Okay. Uh, I would say that there, let's make the tail a little darker, a little fuzzy tail. Uh, and I want to just make that tail a little smaller too, which we could do. The magic of acrylic paint. Do that a little bit lighter. Here, let's just, there you go. What's the tail? I got that tail a little big. There you go. That back out like that. Okay, so John, let me dry this one more time. You let's do the drawing. You guys aren't you excited? See if we won so what last what, week. What we drawing for first, my queen? This well, I think we're gonna draw for um drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. We're gonna draw for a downloadable lesson and we're gonna do the sparkle. The sparkle. The sparkle. So somebody's gonna get that as a downloadable lesson. If you're already an Academy member and you have access to this, uh, we'll give you equivalent value of something else you'd like to have in our downloadable file. But if you yeah. don't have that, this would be, uh, if you're not an Academy member, this is what we're doing this time, Sparkle. All right. And um, you backed out enough where people can see it? I did, now that you told me you were going to flip it up there in two seconds. Yeah, good. That's good, right? <laughs> well, dry. You can mute me. I will do that. Ooh, silence the queen. All right, let's go to the play-by-play -play action. We are going to do the drawing for the downloadable of Sparkle. And we need the link. And not coming up. I'll grab it from up here. That seemed to work last time as well. All righty. Filter duplicates, the reply, specific text, and the text was rooftop, I believe. Hashtag rooftop. Hashtag rooftop. And let's see what we got. Let's turn your mic back on, Queen, so I wouldn't forget. Yeah, do that. Turn my mic back on. We yep. have 76 people, and the winner of the downloadable lesson is, without further ado, Gina Wilson. Congratulations, Miss Gina Wilson. Let me just make a quick shot of that. Gina Wilson, congratulations. That's awesome. Mic's back on, right? Yes, my Queen. This, of mm -hmm. course, it is. Don't be silly. Well, that didn't work. All right. I'll look over here. Do you want me to bring you back or do another drawing? Uh, do another drawing. Do another little drawing. That's good. All righty. And the next word is... We'll do Salvador paint. Salvador kit. Salvador kit. We have 60 people for that. Did we re get it? Yep. And the winner of the Salvador kit is Karen Ryan. Oh, so let me show, show what the Salvador paint kit is. Let oh, me just show that real quick. Back. You can do that in a second. Let's just do the okay. print. Yeah. Okay. And the print with print. And the print, the, the print is um, the one of the Christmas kitties. The Christmas print. kitty with the Santa boot. We have 74 that wanted the print, and the print goes to Linda Lynn QC. That's Quebec Lynn. Okay. So let's fade it back to the queen. Okay, so here's the print that Lynn just won. Congratulations, Miss Lynn. And signed and a certificate of authenticity. And um, here's the Salvador paint kit. That um, 24 professional. This is what I took when we were painting on the trip. Hard. This goes such a long way. It's really great. Love this. And um, 
downloadable. Again, I wanted to just, so that's what someone wants. I wanted to just let you see how nice these look. Oh, look at framed. that. It's so adorable. Yeah, really, really cute uh, framed. And um, now who wouldn't love that in their house, huh? Come on. I mean, and I and I think when you look at it, when you look at the other kitties, that um, if you haven't painted those or, you know, you want to look, look how cute could back way out. So you look how cute. You got two, one eyes closed and one eyes opened, and you've got this nice, it's a, a really nice cute, array isn't of pretty it? cats. They just, they just go great, don't they? Just there you go. So these little eight by ten frames, Jerry sells them in all these great colors. We've got a lot of really beautiful uh, things. But one thing, if you'll back out one more time, John, I want to show this uh, next week, probably for our our Thanksgiving uh, picture um that we're doing will be released was the this is santa's last stop and that's in the academy and um we think you're gonna really really like it it's a really a, it's a wonderful one on perspective it's a really great on, on landscapes and snow and mountains and for those of you who felt like uh, you'd, you'd want to have the painting last longer just don't put the wreath on and you've got a really nice um a nice winter scene. Winter, winter scene um, and then for our Wave and Water Masterclass, for this is December, right? Uh, that would be back for November. Okay. We're behind on them. Th this is our Wave and Water Masterclass uh, painting. It goes with our other one. It goes with our other one. So that's uh, these are the tutorials, step-by-step -step tutorials that will be in the Academy soon. Soon. And so I'm going to just want to mention that. So you can see where we've got... See where the you see it actually is almost a turquoisey green color and it goes very nice with the orange. Here's our other little kitty, but you can see we've got a lot more uh, uh, brightness. I want to mention that this cat was, and that's because we did the gold underneath. This cat and this cat were both painted with. Uh, this was just regular uh, tabby body acrylics. This was done with the Salvador. Really can't tell the difference. They're really, they're marvelous paints. And um, we love those. And I'm just looking now to see if there's anything else I want to do to that. Probably um, he's got on this ed edge, he's got a little bit of a, uh, I'm going to take a little bit of the, um, he's got whiskers. And so I want to put the little dots where his whiskers are. And that's almost like, you almost want to go like straight down with the brush and just do it in a little arc, follow the curve. And uh, come up here like this. And you don't have to do every. Just try to, if they barely show up, that's okay, too. Um, you don't need, you don't need, don't, don't make them very big and you don't need, need much. The same thing here. Just put a couple. Just suggest it. If you get these too big, it'll just look so odd, you guys. So I'd rather just suggest something. Just suggest a few almost little whiskery things. And um, again, I want something a little darker under here where his chin is, where it's a little bit darker here. There's his little chin now. He's, you can really feel like he's he's leaning on this. And this is where, for instance, I want to show that there's an edge between the... Um, the, the on his face, so then I would just do a little bit more white right here to show that's the edge of his face right here, not here. That's part of the cat, but this is the edge of his face is right there. See that? And start with the least amount, and then you can add more color if you need to. Build it, build it up. Yeah, just you know, don't don't get too crazy on me, okay? Hey, we'd like to thank Joan for the donation that came in through a PayPal. Thank you, Miss Joan. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, absolutely. And let's see, it made this a little longer. A few little light hairs here. Final little light hairs. Now, this is where a damp brush can come in. Just Joyce would like to know, how do you prepare the surface for the magnet canvases? Uh, you know what was funny, Joyce, was this was the night, whatever they did for this, I wish I could buy canvases with whatever they have on there, because this is the, I didn't do anything. No, this that, should, that wasn't this, even underpainted. This one didn't even underpaint. This was the nicest surface to paint on I've ever found. It went so easy. 
It was almost like absorbent ground. It had a little bit of that quality to it. And it just came out so nice. I have to tell you, I was I was surprised. I did several. I was surprised at how and how how nice it came out. You've painted on, you paint on about six of them so far. Yeah, I've done about six, and I was just remarking to John how nice they are. I mean, they're just um, they are absolutely great. Made that just a little bit darker on his nose. And um, let's just bring this around a little bit here on his paw. All right, so there you go. I mean, I don't know. I think that's cute. I mean, you could, could you do something lighter? Um, this is where you get into having to own lots of reds. Um, let's see, I've got, uh, you know, part of me always wants to see the next bright red. Uh, that's cad red medium. Um, I want a brighter red. Where's the, what's this? Quadrochrome red. That won't do it. What's you want this? that series number seven red? Of yeah, teeth. if I had that number seven series red, that's a really bright. They can't even hardly print that. Um, the cheese structure. Let's see, this is kind of see. I want a little bit brighter red somewhere. Oh, that was interesting. It came off in, what's that? Okay, here. Let me just put a little of that right there. We got those, can those magnetic canvases at Hobby Lobby. Yeah, see, that's not doing it. Let's see what, we put a little white with that. This is called um, uh, primary red. I just wanted a highlight on this hat. Does that make sense? And you I wasn't add a little more dimension to it. Yeah, I just just weird. I just wanted to highlight. I just wanted a little highlight right here under this this chin right there. Just just something a little bit lighter right there, where his chin was. Just smudge it out with my finger, and just something a little bit lighter. I don't really want pink, but on the other hand, um, there we go. Was it good? The acrylic's dry darker, and I wasn't getting the highlight I wanted. So that was my contrast, but that's somebody else. What do you do with a lot of reds? And sometimes it, sometimes you can have just a, a lighter red that can be very effective. Um, just put that in there like that. And then if you if I want a little more contrast here, I can take this darker right next to here. Looking at the cat, that's pretty dark right in there, on his um, back right there. So that shows up. So there you go. I don't. I don't think there's really much more I would want, want to do to it. Um, someone asked about the whiskers. If you wanted to do whiskers, I would probably use a Posca pen. Wouldn't it be super super fine on a kitten? Well, they would be, and you could just you know they would be. So you could have like you could have just a few. You you wouldn't need many. Just a few, if you're going to do any like that. Just you want the super fine one, and um, want a little white right under here. It's a little bit whiter. See, not funny. And then I'll just um, I would sign it right here, but the, what somewhere you could see it here like that. Here I'll sign it right here. I want to. Thank everybody for subscribing to the channel and uh, giving us a like if we haven't had a like. Uh, what's our contest for this week, John? Oh, we didn't do anything this week. Well, we can't. We just, we're not done, right? We're not done. I need to write it up, though. I got to find my page. John's going to write it up, and I, th I think we should do a contest for this week. I think we want to really, you know, want to do another one of these limited, you know, these, these prints and uh, perhaps some. Um, I just wanted to show you why he's writing it up, how, how cool this is. Here's the, you know, here's, we have a dog. These are some of our releases that we're doing. We have ice skates. I, I think these prints will make great gifts. And we've kept them $30 and what was it? like? 25 and 30. 25 and 30, which is, we think it's, and they'll, they'll mail easily. Here's our Sparkle Santa. So if you're looking for some something to give somebody for Christmas and, you know. Oh, well, that's one of my favorites there. 
That's what, well, on yeah, the trail. The, the, on the trail. Love this one. Um, of course, we have the um, a print of the the Way with Water Masterclass that's coming in December or November this month, and we've got Santa's Last Stop. And then this one, the reason I wish which I wanted you to, you to see this one, we think this was one of our best paintings from last year, originally done by one of our old dead artists. This was one of our successful tutorials. We have a print of that, and our best Santa last year was this one. And we have a print of that. So if you're looking for something, let us know right away so we can get these off to you. You can get them in the mail. Um, and and the secret word for next week is nap time. And nap time is all one word. Yeah. All and one the, word. And this is a, this is our uh, trickster the tricks the card dog. And this, uh, the, the original of this is like a huge painting. It's really neat. If you haven't seen the tutorial on this, one of our Academy step-by-step -step tutorials. So just a little plug for our Academy. I want to thank everybody for uh, hanging out there with us. And to, to Andrew, please be safe. And for those of you who don't know, Andrew's been, you know, doesn't have, you know, things have gotten so bad in Haiti where he is that, um, you know, that he was trying to paint by candlelight that couldn't get even the fuel to get the generators going. And he's hanging in there. He's lived there for 40, 50 years. And, 100 um, years. Well, hundreds of years. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. You know, he, but he grew up in the States. And um, and for those of us who, you know, are going through a little bit of shortages of here and there, if you can't find stuff, we just, uh, we have it really lucky, you guys. We've got it really good. And um, all the best to Andrew. And just let people know, aware that he, the fact that he's even, getting any internet on at night for a solar powered battery and it, if you can even get the internet it's amazing so hang in there andrew we love you and uh, we love you guys and uh, so what, what's the other thing we're doing john so we've done all the i've done everything i'm supposed to do john's done everything he's supposed to do <laughs> mine's supposed to do is tell you guys you're fabulous you're wonderful anybody can learn to paint it's a skill not a talent talent is the guy that invented the helicopter skill is the guy that keeps making it Get the what about the guy that did the down. escalator? Yeah, Talon is the guy that did the escalator. We still haven't changed it. So that's the same thing. Years. Yeah, so, that was a brilliant dude. So or do that. John John gets very excited about him. So because you know, but I'm just saying that don't look. Don't start comparing yourself to other people. No. You're learning your skills. I mean, some of you, when you went to school, learned to spell right away. I'm still figuring out how to spell. Okay, I was asking John, how do you spell this, right? <laughs> but it's learnable. It's a language. It's learnable. If you want some extra help, join the Academy. Personal art coaching will get you further down the road than you would believe. And uh, so check us out on that. Acrylic painting with gingercook.com. We'll see you next week. And just a shout out to our moderators for hanging in there. Love you guys. And um, see you. And happy Turkey Day to everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. For those that celebrate. Bye. Bye. Ginger Cook, the queen of color, with a blazing brush at the speed of light, and a blank canvas, and a hearty yes and yes. The queen of color, Ginger Cook, and her sidekick, John Little, teach you to paint with acrylics.